guys let's get going for a workout tonight tonight we're gonna do uh, the Tkachev clinic 2.0 I think that this is probably the most informative Tkachev information that I've ever had as a coach and I just want to make sure that we go one more time at it make sure that uh, the information is put out clearly so that everybody has an opportunity to benefit from it we're gonna have Mitchell Mandozi with us and coach Lou is gonna join us again and I think that we have a good organized way of coming about the information so it will be even more helpful than it was last week so we're gonna get started on our presentation we're gonna first go to coach Lou nice having you how's it going I'm great Dan thank you for having me I'm excited to be back here short thing I'm also gonna introduce Mitchell he's also gonna be talking to coach Lou um, back and forth about the Tkachev and we'll have some questions for Mitchell but mostly I want Mitchell and Lou to just take a look at the videos and give you their experiences and their ideas and thoughts about how to do a Tkachev effectively so nice to have you here Mitchell okay so coach Lou when we're talking about Tkachev in gymnastics in general I use a lot of terms like dynamic movement and that's how energy transfers happen. So we start, you would hold a shape and then you have to move quickly from one shape to the next shape. And the faster that you can move from one shape to another shape, the more force it takes because it's force times distance. And the more force it takes, the stronger that you have to be. So to get really good at gymnastics, you have to be really strong, which is why you do all that strength. But then you have to use that strength in moving from one shape to the next. And so we talk about a dynamic shape change and it's holding a shape tight and then quickly moving to another shape and then stopping and holding that shape. And if you don't have that pause, that rest time, then the timing gets off and you really get into these weird situations where you start going in the wrong direction or you, you miss the bounce of the bar. So not only do you have to have the dynamic shape change, but you also have to have a tight body shape throughout a movement. So you have to really pause and wait there also. So today when we're talking about the Tkachev, we're going to talk about three major sections. First section, second section, and third section. And those are where the dynamic shape changes happen. But then you have to remember that to get from one shape to the next, you have to hold that shape and that energy has to maintain all the way into the next phase of the next dynamic shape change. So I want you to keep in mind that the three phases that we're going to be talking about on the Tkachev are where the dynamic movements happen. And then between those phases, it's quiet. And there's not a lot going on, but it's a super tight body. So we're gonna take a look at Mitch Mendoza's Tkachev because it's probably one of the best Tkachevs that I've ever seen. And so this is Mitch's uh, layout Tkachev. This was at um, NEAG, which is a fantastic gym where Mitch grew up and did uh, most of his junior gymnastics. So this, I'm going to really be looking at three phases by looking at when the bar gets pulled. I'm going to zoom in here for a sec and look at how the bar gets pulled that way. The bar gets pulled that way once, the bar gets pulled that way twice. There's the second one and the bar gets pulled this way again. Those are the three phases that I'm going to be talking about on the Tkachev. This first phase is defined by the bar movement right there. So I'm going to put a circle around that. Boom. This next phase is defined by this bar movement right there. Next one is right there. All right. These are where the major um, forces get put on the get put on the bar, and you, you're going to notice some pretty dynamic shape changes. So when we're talking about this Tkachev, we're talking about generating counter rotation and the whole giant goes all the way around the bar like that. But within there, you got to be, you have to be generating some counter rotation. And you start to generate that counter rotation by isolating different parts of the body. 
and transferring your kinetic energy into one part of the body while stabilizing another part of the body. So in this one, in this first phase, you can see his feet aren't moving very much at all, but his hips or his shoulders are moving a lot. Mitch is pretty tight through the shoulders so that a lot of gymnasts will talk about this movement happening more in the shoulders, but everybody's a little bit different and you got to work with what you got. You can see how Mitch is doing his feet almost stop on that green line, right? But his hips cover a whole, a whole lot of space on that. Once he gets out of this, he's really just holding that shape into the next phase. So this is a, this is a really a dynamic shape change right there. You can see he moves a, a lot through that section, but then he really holds that same shape into this next section. On this next section, um, it, it changes. So now his shoulders are gonna move very little, but his feet are gonna move all the way over there. And that's a big movement on the feet. So his shoulders hit the bottom. You can see his feet are back there and his feet move all the way over there. And his shoulders hardly move at all. So we have a, he has a lot of kinetic energy going there and his toes are going almost, almost straight up at the end of this phase. Right, so his shoulders are moving back and his feet are moving now. This next phase, his feet stop. You can see right there, the bar is starting to move. So that's, so that's where that uh, phase is defined. His feet are gonna stop there, right? But his shoulders are gonna move a whole lot. That's where the big counter rotation comes because his shoulders move up and then his feet can go underneath him. Underneath him. So in order to create this um, large amount of counter rotation, on each phase, you have, to, you have to have a very dynamic shape change. And then as you're moving from one phase to the next, you have to stay really tight, really tight, really tight. And then dynamic shape change. And then hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't move it. And then change it again. So there's a very fast movement and then hold. And then very fast movement and a hold and a very fast movement and a hold. And if you don't have the, um, the ability to move super fast and then maintain shape through the hold, you really can't go up in the air on that. And that's pretty much the, um, the entire skill. Let's look at this a couple times in normal speed. Look at it in normal speed again. One more time. And now we're gonna move back to a uh, half speed and see if you can see each, um, each phase, how the energy is generated and the movement changes and just try to separate these phases in your head and the space between them. All right, that's pretty much the way that I think about it, Takachev. What do you think about that? I think it's spot on. Like you said, I don't have the most flexible shoulders, but um, those dynamic shape changes can either happen in your shoulders or your hips. As long as you keep body tension throughout the whole thing, that energy transfer in the back and in the bottom um, will translate into balance in the bar. If you can't retain that body tension, the bar will whip you around like a noodle. So I think the most important thing is just that tension. You're trying to work the bar like a trampoline and you're trying to put your body in the right position so that when the bar bounces back, you can redirect it so you can sit up and see the bar over the top. I think it's spot on what you were talking about, holding the shape um, in the back, pull the bar this way, your feet stay up, and then you hold that shape all the way through the bottom until so you kick your toes up in the front. It's not as fast as some people think until you let go of the bar. That is probably the fastest motion. Patience with this skill is huge because if you rush it, the bar will throw you not where you want it to go. So just got to have reps and got to figure out what works for you for each gymnast. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how not moving is such a big part of this skill. 
like you, when we talk about patience in gymnastics, it's patience to hold a shape for like half a second or a third of a second. Like don't move for a third of a second. That's patience in gymnastics. That's not a lot of patience, but it feels like it's forever when you're doing these skills. This whole um, generating counter rotation, it's a whole field of distor skills. It's a Corvette. So these Corvette skills, we're going to look at another one that I think really emphasizes the patient hold through the bottom. This one's on bars and it's the Bavsar, probably the best Bavsar that I've seen. Uh, Raj Bavsar sent me a video of his and his was really dirty. So for those of you watching, look at the simil similarities between this and the Takacha that we just watched. Very, very similar skills. So I'm gonna look for where the bar bends on this one. And the P-bars bend, they don't bend that way really well. But if you can see this upright, zoom in on this upright. If you can see this upright, this upright moves right there, right? You see how that upright gets pulled there? That's not one of the ways that a P-bar is designed to bend and it's bending there. So I'm gonna, that's definitely, this upright right here starts, uh, even even if it's an eighth of a centimeter. Now we're looking at the P bars bending. So I'm looking right there at how much the P bars are actually flexing up there. So that's, there's our phase two right there. And then the third phase, there it is. There's that second bounce, right? You got the, the bounce through the bottom and then he has to wait and there's that second bounce right there at how much the P bars are actually flexing up there. So that's, there's our phase two right there. And then the third phase, there it is. There's that second bounce, right? You got the, the bounce through the bottom and then he has to wait and there's that second bounce right there. So there's this phase three. All right. Let's look at the different motions of the body here. So there's phase one. For this one, the shoulders are moving here and his feet are moving, just staying up there a little bit. His shoulders move about like that. And his feet move very, his feet move just very little bit. All right, so there's his phase one. It's a little, it's a little different right? Then um, what we saw in high bar, but you can definitely see you aren't moving very much. Hips move pretty far. Yeah, his hips are, his hips moved a ton. Right, his hips are, the, his hips move more than anything. So really, I mean, we, I always thought of it as the shoulders, but man, those hips are really flying through there, right? Yeah. And the feet barely move at all. Okay, the next one, Here's, there it is. Like the, sho the shoulders have absolutely stopped on a dime. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no shoulder movement on this and at all. His feet must swing 135 degrees. Yeah. All the way through there. Feet are, feet are way back there at the beginning of that blue and they come all the way through there. Huge motion. Very little shoulders and huge motion with the feet. And then he kind of waits, 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 waits. And there, right here. So his feet actually move a little bit more than that. And, but his shoulders come all the way up there. His feet stop, his shoulders move. And then he changes shape. So his shoulders are moving and now this shape change happens and things get a little bit funky with it. Right? But coming off the bar, that, that is, and how fast his shoulders are coming from down there to up there, that is definitely what we saw in the Takacha. Same thing. One of the things that I think you can see really good on this is from this phase two, he holds that so good on that. So he, he gets to that shape here, right? 
And then you can almost see his core like totally tightening through there. Like that's like four frames of him just holding. One, two, three, four, five, six, six frames of absolutely just holding tight through that. That's how he ends up getting able to bend that bar so much through there because he didn't lose any of that energy there. Super, super tight for six frames until he changed his shape again. Mitchell, how long did it take you to really develop a Takacha of, uh, like, and not just a Takacha that comes over the bar, but, I mean, was it just something that happened all of a sudden or was it something that emerged over years and years of practice? Was there a strength that you did? Was there something that somebody said that, that really clicked with you? I think I caught my first one in 2011, so nine years ago. I have a video of it. There was, I'm trying to think of something that I changed. I grew a lot in the middle of my Takacha of Adventures, so I had to redo the whole tap because I grew like seven inches and lost some core tension there. So I had to learn how to work the bar given that I wasn't the tightest gymnast ever. One thing that I think you told me, Dan, when I was learning it was that the bar is a trampoline. And I think you said something like, if your knees are bent when you hit the trampoline on like a normal trampoline, you're not going anywhere, you're just gonna collapse. And same thing with your arms and your knees and your toes on a Takacha tap. If they're, if they're soft, they're not tight, the energy can't transfer to the bar. So that over the years helped. I did a lot of trampoline drills where you bounce on your back and you learn how to sit up through a straddle to your stomach. I did a lot of those. You can do that with a layout too, keeping your legs together. That's how I trained a Liukin too. It's just that timing of the snap, driving your heels, sitting up and looking at the bar and doing whatever skill you want to do. Any difference between a Tkachev and a Liukin? Uh, no. Maybe a little bit earlier in the back because the twist in a Liukin kind of slows the rotation. So I want to get the rotation going faster and sooner. But it's essentially the same skill. You just lift an arm and twist. And once you have the base tap of a Tkachev, you can really do any skill. I think that understanding those three phases and being able to have that pause between them in order to create the the, the down pressure and then the counter rotation from, from that, all those sister skills, all, all those Corbett skills, you can do any of them. And the more efficient that you are with the transfer of energy from shape to shape and the faster dynamic shape changes, that's really the limiting factors, the strength and the quickness and the ability to have that pause between the phases. I have another analysis, which is between Mitch's Takachev, a very good Takachev, and one that doesn't have a very efficient change between the shapes. So the, coming into these two things, it's very different, but this is the first phase, and then this is the second phase, and then this is the third phase, and the ending is very different, right? But here is similar. I mean, that's, pr that's pretty close to the same, right? This is pretty close to the same, where it gets to be pretty different com looking at where his toes are going compared to where his toes are going. I mean, we have, and we have Mitch's toes facing up there, and we have Yusuf's toes facing down there. So that's actually pretty significantly different. I mean, actually, right now, Mitchell's toes are pointing over the bar, and Yusuf's are pointing 45 degrees in front of the bar. Yeah. I want to make a point real quick. The back of Yusuf's tap compared to mine, the, the start of it, his looks a lot like a Tapelt tap that we just watched the guy do on P bars, where his shoulders go down and his hips go down, and he isn't able to pull the bar very well because of the looseness in his back. And he doesn't have much angle in his shoulders, so he's not able to push the bar back. So that makes the, that initial pull of the bar isn't there. So when he kicks forward, the bar is not going back and forth like it should. It's more going down and up. So that's where the timing in the front goes a little weird because the bar isn't moving in the right direction on the same on that same axis that I am. I totally agree. And I think that when you get to that open shape, you're super tight there. When he gets to it, mm -hmm. he keeps on changing his shape. Like he, he's all the way like this and Mitch has maintained it like that. They get to a very similar shape, but Mitchell stays in that shape all the way from the back all the way down to the beginning of stage two. 
And Yusuf, the whole entire time, is still allowing his body to continue to whip and the energy to keep transferring from his shoulders down to his hips, down to his knees, down to his toes, and it never really establishes itself because his body is still changing shape. Because of that, he doesn't get the down on the bar, right? That down is not nearly as much. And because of that, he can't get his toes up. So I think what Mitch said is exactly right. It's all in the transition from the phase one to the phase two where he's missing the tightness of that and then he can't pull the bar in the correct direction. Any way that you can expand Yusuf's so that we can actually see if he has an actual bar pulls? There's a stage one bar pull. And there's stage two. He does pull the bar. It's just on the wrong tempo and axis. Because that I think shoulder is totally in the wrong spot, right? I mean, that shoulder throw is uh, like when that bar is like that, he should be off the bar. I think what, what causes this, and I, th I ran into it a couple times too, is he doesn't have a front pull. So there's no benchmark position that, so I want to pull right there. When you say a front pull, are you talking about this pull right here? Yes, his is so up and down. He doesn't have that kind of checkpoint. So he's just kind of throwing. He's just trying to get over the bar and not get injured, right? It's just protection. So if he can establish that back and forth pull of the bar, he's going to feel a pull. I've seen people do tkachevs and their, their hips are not at 90 degree in front and they still do it, but they have that back and forth pull. I always think that this spot here, being able to spot there, you find where that bottom is and you got to feel that down pressure super hard. And I don't feel like he's feeling that down pressure. I think the key is that like he doesn't really ever set his body from stage one to stage two. His body is in continuous yeah. motion. So he's not storing energy. It's all dissipating. I totally agree. To conclude, be fast, be tight and be patient. What's the difference between transitioning from a straddle Tkachev to a laid out Tkachev? You will find out if you have the right technique when you try it a laid out Takacha for the first time because you will just either fly over the bar backwards or you'll do it correctly. The technique shows a lot more in a layout. But one thing I wanted to say is it's just simple stuff like V-ups. You can do V-ups really fast working the hip movement, right? I do a bunch of V-ups. I do a bunch of leg lifts on a bar with my back against the wall. So I'm training my hips to be able to, even at the bottom of the swing on high bar, I can still pull my toes up. That kind of strength is going to give you more control on the bar and be able to put it wherever you want. The strength in being able to change body shapes fast happens during strength time. So you're actually working your skills during strength time. If you, if you think that strength time is just a waste of time and you're not really focused on doing it gymnastically well, then you're really kind of letting go the massive learning part of your gymnastics because that's where the grind happens. That's where day to day you will get better because of your strength. You don't just get better because all of a sudden you figure things out. Rarely does that happen. Rarely is it a timing issue because you're, you're doing it so often and so, and so many times. The timing usually comes from being faster and being tighter. That's where the timing usually comes from. You don't learn that by doing the skills over and over and over again, because if you do that, you just make the same mistakes over and over and over again. You get better during strength. And then the next week you see the results of what you did the week before from strength. So if you're making progress this week, look at what you did last week during strength. Look at what happened then. To go off what he said, I was never a strong gymnast. And then when I went to college, I got totally ripped because 50% of our workouts are strength. And it's amazing. Everything got easier. And I was able to learn skills so much easier. So I can't put enough emphasis on strength of all types because it will help you immensely and it will keep you healthy. If you don't prioritize strength, you will not reach your goals as fast as you'd think you would. Mitchell Mandozi, Iowa Gymnastics. Hawkeye, NEAG. I appreciate you so much, man. Appreciate it. Great job, guys. My hands not chopped. Hands not chopped. Never ever chopped. My hands not chopped. I swear on a big bar block. I lay with my legs feeling shocked. The bar twings like duck, duck, duck. I never look at the clock. My hands not chopped. My hands not chopped.